Hi guys, Shane here, and welcome to the final episode of our Panther 126 diorama build. So in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at creating the final diorama and all the various elements to create this scene you see before you. So in this episode, we're going to take a look at our two figures. So our surrendering German Panzer crewman is from Red Dew Miniatures and our US Armored Infantryman is from Alpine Miniatures. So I have painted these off screen or off camera and these are the two painted miniatures. I'll give you full tutorials on these video on these camera flash and uniform patterns, um, links to them in the video description. So they both painted up absolutely wonderfully. I just used uh, Filejo acrylic paints to uh, create these two paint jobs. And it's always nice to try creating P dot camouflage patterns. It's also something I want to refine. And this was a fantastic miniature to uh, experiment on. And also the sculpt on the Alpine miniatures figure was absolutely gorgeous. Again, it's an absolute pleasure to paint. So again, down to some proper painting. So now we're going to start working on the tree armature for our diorama. And for this, we're just going to take some random Filejo model colors. And we're just going to take some drabs, some dark green, some dark browns, some neutral gray, and maybe a light cork color. It doesn't really matter the colors you use. Just keep them earthly. Keep them somewhat um, subdued. So you're just looking for those nice drabs and earthly colors and a nice kind of mid-tone gray tone, which I'll show you um, what we're going to use that for. So swinging on to our wet palette here, I'm just going to take some German camo dark green, a small amount of field grey, a little bit here of cork brown, a little bit here of flat earth, some neutral grey, and a little bit of flat brown on top of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heavily thin these down with water. I'm going to apply about 60% water onto the wet palette and really water these down. So our tree armature here is actually just a piece of twig that I dried out over a couple of months. And I primed it in this black surface primer just to act as our base coat. And using our furry water down paint, we're going to start building up our layers to create our tree. You could just use the twig as is, but the problem is if you use it just the normal texture on the twig and the normal bark color, it just looks like a twig. So we're going to have to try to replicate a tree miniature. So I'm going to start by applying the darkest color and work our way up. And for that, I'm just going to take our um, German dark green here. So any kind of dark green or rich green color. And again, laying it down in very thin down layers. Now switching up to our flat earth. And again, this has been heavily thinned down. And you can kind of see that I'm putting it down on a almost like a staggered motion. I'm not trying to completely overwhelm and overpaint the areas of the dark green. And I'm just going to keep doing this, adding different colors back and forth, interlocking them, blending them together, just in several layers. Again, if you don't like color, you can always just go back and add the pre-existing um, color or the preceding color, should I say, and just keep going back and forth until you're happy with the texture. If you ever look at an actual tree and, um, you know, I, I look like a madman, I'm walking um, out in the countryside, I'm staring at tree trunks and taking photos of them. And it just gives you an idea of the texture and the pattern that um, tree trunks seem to have in the wild. So I'm just trying to emulate what I've observed in nature. So to add some of the exposed um, tree here that the bark has been removed. I'm just going to take some cork brown which again has been heavily thinned down. I do want it to be somewhat translucent. I don't want any color to be overly stark and I'm just going to put down a layer or two but I don't mind if the, the dark or the, the black shows through. It just adds a bit of depth and a little bit of realism. 
Being subdued here is the name of the game. So now we're going to move on to probably the most involved stage of painting up our tree and that is to add these little cross sections of grey. Now there's probably a word for it in, in um, the, the development of trees, I'm not a, a horticulturist so I'm probably not the right one to uh, be giving sage advice. And I've just heavily watered down some neutral grey and I'm just going to start painting little horizontal stripes and I'm just going to really work my way across the entire tree trunk over all of the various colours with the exception of our cork brown for the exposed core of the tree. So to add the foliage to the tree I'm going to take our shrubbery and these are basically pre-made uh, foliage from Green Stuff World and I'm going to take the autumn shrubbery here and I'm just going to use them straight out of the box. I'm going to cheat here a little bit by not creating my own. And I'm just going to super glue some of these smaller limbs to some of the um, kind of areas that make sense. So basically, I need the parts that have like a limb coming out of the tree. I'm just going to drill a small hole and super glue these small pieces of shrubbery in place. And you get some very basic foliage and uh, limbs and branches. It's a bit simplistic, but it serves the purpose I needed to do. Okay, so moving into the actual base itself. And for that we're mostly going to be using AK ground effects. So these are basically acrylic textured and colored paint uh, pastes, so that should I say? And we're going to use these in different ways to create our muddy field effect. So before we start doing any of the textures, I just want to draw your attention to this channel here in the ditch. So one of you um, uh, find subscribers suggested I should dig that side deeper so the panther sits deeper into the ditch, which was 100% the right call, so thank you very much for that advice, you know who you are. So I just had dug that out, just cut through the foam and added a new layer of uh, texture and then primed the black on top of it. So I'm just doing my final checks here just to make sure everything works the way I want it to do. And I'm just going to pin the tree in place. So I've actually just super glued, just like how I do with my figures, I've super glued a paper clip into the base of the tree, and that's gonna be my mounting pin. And once I'm happy with its position, I'm just gonna come in here with an exacto blade or a scample, and I'm just gonna cut away a small amount of the foam here and the plaster mix just to um, seat that tree a little bit more realistically into the base. And I'm just going to mount that in place with a small amount of wood glue and then just leave it for about an hour to set. So now we're on to the messy part and for this we're going to be taking some AK Train Wet Ground. And this is from their diorama range and again these are acrylic based pastes that have been pre-textured and also pre-coloured. Now you could lay these down and paint on top of them if you wish. Um, there's just not enough hours a day for me to make me want to do that. So I'm actually going to apply them directly out of the tub and unaltered. And we're just going to experiment to see what we can get. Real important thing to bear in mind with this, even though these are water based and you can clean your brushes with water, these will this product will destroy brushes. So only use cheap or old brushes you don't mind sacrificing to the diorama gods. So what I do is I apply the ground texture in sections. So the trick with this is work in sections. Don't try to do everything in one go. You will have an absolute miserable time because this will dry pretty quick, especially if you're in a kind of warmer climate. And as you can see here, I apply 
a little bit down at a time, and then I stipple. You see me stippling down the texture? And what I'm doing there is I'm trying to remove any unnatural pooling textures that I'm getting from laying down the paste. Now once I've laid down a coat or two of this, again just stippling to add texture and just blend everything together, you're going to see me start adding some static grass to the mix. You'll see me start um, sprinkling some of this static grass into the wet mixture. And then I'll start stippling and mixing the grass into our wet mud here. And this is what's going to give us some really nice textures to work with, as well as give the impression of um, churned up mud. So now I'm going to start imprinting some of the um, tracks into the mud. And for that, I'm just going to use the Panther's original rubber band tracks here. So I don't even mind messing these up and you can see that I'm really laying down the, the, the texture quite heavily just so I have a bit of um, material to work with now I will recommend that if when you're trying to imprint detail allow the product to stand for about 10 minutes before you do anything otherwise it's just too soft and you just pull the um, the ground paste up with you I'm also going to fill in the ditches with quite a, a thick coating of our ground uh, paste here. And this is actually going to act as the adhesive to fix our panther to the base. And this is one of the reasons why I added the track marks now, because it might be a little bit tricky to go back once the panther is in place to try to line up the tracks to create the impressions from the tank moving through the ground. So being kind of careful here, I don't want to get any of this product up on the tank itself. I don't want to destroy our, our work here. So I'm just going to very carefully and kind of gingerly just place it onto the base and push down ever so gently just to ensure that it actually comes into contact with the, uh, the ground texture, so it will actually lock in place once it sets. So an interesting and kind of important little thing to do here is taking our ground texture, I start to work some of our mud texture into the tracks just to ensure that there's a, a harmony of elements going on in the base. Um, it would be a mistake just to leave the tank weathered as is, as it won't match the actual environment that the tank is being displayed in, especially too in a, a wet and muddy environment where mud is coming up onto the vehicle the entire time. So I'm just drilling the guide holes for our, our figures here. I just want to get the positioning of them now before we continue on to the next step and that is the uh, adding the texture for the road. And once I'm happy with the positions, I haven't glued anything in place, I'm just going to add some cocktail sticks here to the holes that we've drilled into the base. And these are going to be my markers and also act as our guide holes for the final mounting of the figures a little bit later in the video. Now we're moving on to the road, again we're using the same mud texture.
So it's important too if you're putting overlapping layers, you know, that you've, uh, you're putting new product over another dry layer that you blend and stipple the edges so they have a natural transition so you don't get any weird tide marks with this. So again, it won't look realistic. So when you apply one layer, like for example, where the road meets the ditch, I will actually just stipple down into the ditch to create a natural transition. And just going back here with our static grass, which I might have mentioned earlier, this is six millimeter static grass from Jarvis. Again, any static grass will do. I'm just going to apply small amounts into the wet mixture and just uh, stipple and mix everything together. And that's going to create some nice interesting textures, especially around areas where I want to kind of replicate that the grass has been crushed into the mud. So I want to impart some basic imprints into the uh, the road to get the impression of traffic moving through and I'm just taking the back of the paintbrush and I'm just dragging it across the wet mixture. I've allowed it to stand for about maybe 10 minutes just so it can firm up a little bit and then just applying very light pressure I just slowly drag some um, in this case some spare wheels from my spares box the back of a brush to create some dark deeper channels into the mud So I'm also going to add some leaf scatter, in this case this is from Scenic Factory I believe, but you can get these type of uh, dried leaf scatter basically from a whole host of companies. And I just again apply it onto the wet mixture and then just gently with a brush I just tap them in to the mud just to ensure one that they affix and that they also blend into the mud a little bit. I'm not trying to bury them into the mud as such, I'm just trying to make sure that they kind of sit naturally. And as you can see, there's a lot of back and forth. So I'm going back onto the other side now, just to fill in the gap between the tracks and the base. So any areas where the tracks don't actually meet the base, I'm just going to come in and add a couple of layers of our ground paste here, just to blend everything together. Also just adding some more of our leaf scatter, just to add some visual interest. I'm just taking some figures from my spare bits box and I'm still just going to add some footprints into the mud. Now we're going to mount the figures and just going to take a small amount of uh, wood glue and just mount these in place. And again, I'm just going to few from different angles as I'm setting these up. Just I want to make sure that they, the story kind of works and that both figures are kind of natural. I'm just going to blend down the PVA glue here, or the wood glue in this case, should I say. Just make sure I don't get any kind of weird bulging with the glue. Again, some more footprints, again, just following the natural track of this walking figure. Just again, to give the impression that he's been walking through the mud. Now we're moving on to adding the grass to our field section. And for this, we're going to be using some of the Dio Mat Tufts from AK Interactive. These are the summer leaves, but we're going to use some basic painting techniques just to dull, dull these down and make them a bit more realistic. So I'm just going to take some, some buff colors, some drabs, some dark browns, some dark greens, just a few different kind of shades. And we're just going to uh, heavily thin them down and we're just going to gently paint in these areas. 
So I have affixed the grass tufts, so they're self-adhesive, but I would recommend just dipping them into a bit of PVA as you're mounting them, just to make sure that they lock down onto the base. And just taking our different shades of of uh, green and brown colors, kind of mix them together to create some like dark uh, green shades with a bit of a brown hint to it. I'm just going to gently airbrush some of these areas. One, just to take the artificial sheen out of this, as well as just creating a little bit more visual interest. So now that the glue has been allowed to dry, we're going to start blending our figures onto the base. So just taking a small brush and a small amount of our, our mud texture, I'm just going to ensure that we um, build up some mud around their shoes to make, make it look like they're actually sitting or standing in the mud, should I say. And I'm also going to just apply a small amount, again, very little amount of this, onto their boots and onto the lower parts of their trousers. The tanker, or the panzer crewman here, he's just gone out of his tank. So he's not going to be particularly dirty. So I'm just going to apply a, a, an appropriate amount of mud to his boots. Whereas our infantryman here, well, he's just been fighting and been on the ground for how many days or weeks prior. So we're going to build a bit more mud on him. You don't have to go too crazy with this. Again, less is always more with these type of things. You're, you're giving the indication of detail rather than having to go crazy. You're not trying to smack them over the head with it. You just want to give them, the person, um, a visual storytelling cue rather than, you know, just slam them in the head and go, there's mud everywhere. That's, it's just a, a way of how I kind of quantify it. So now we're moving on to adding the final details. So on the real Panther 126, the antenna was snapped. So I have created or recreated this just using a bit of stretch sprue. So this is the four meter antenna and it's just a piece of stretch sprue that I've bent and then painted and weathered accordingly. So moving on then we're going to add our Shorzen plates. So these are the photo wedge Shorzen plates from Aber if you recall all the way back when we actually did the build of this Panther almost two years ago. And just using a little bit of accelerator that I was sprayed onto the back plate of these um, shores and plates or onto the back of the shores and plate should I say I'm just going to very carefully affix them to place again using the photograph as my reference And then just taking a bit of wood glue, we're going to add the lens to our Noctilite here. It's a bit of a tight fit, so I'll just be a bit careful fitting it that it doesn't snap. And now just to fix the final details and some things I'm worried that might fall off, I'm just going to take some AK Gravel and Sand Fixer. And just using a pipette, I'm just going to flow this into the areas where I've added some loose leaves, just to lock it onto the fake. Now this product dries somewhat glossy, however that's not a problem for us because again this is meant to be a wet and muddy environment so that bit of gloss actually helps sell the story. However if you're using this in a context in a dry environment you can just hit it with a bit of matte varnish on top of it and that glossiness will vanish.
And now a detail I'm so excited about. I've never got a, a custom made nameplate for any of my builds before. So I actually got one made for this because I thought it was quite fitting. And this is from an engraver on Etsy. I'll give you a link to his shop uh, if you guys want to uh, get some for yourselves. And it's a piece of back. So I just ensure that I um, align it in a, in a level way. And with that guys, Panther 126 is finally done guys. I know this has been almost a three year odyssey. But thank you so much guys for going through with me and I really hope it was worth the wait. Guys, thank you so much. Stay safe out there and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.